welcome to the exquisite Surface Paradise Villa. It's at 11 Glen Eagles Drive in the village of Mount Irvin and it is our location for today's episode of Let's Talk Tobago. As usual, you are invited to join us on a tour of this lovely property for the next half hour while we'll also keep you updated on all the latest major events happening right here in Tobago. So stay with us for all the details. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. It's Finance Month and that means the 13th Annual Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference. Community Development Week 2019 was packed with activities. We have the highlights. We'll also tell you about a key service for breast cancer patients, the Pink Room Bra Fitting Clinic, and later, the spoken word holds court as artists turn out to support one of their own. All this and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. We'll be right back. Surface Paradise Villa is ideally located, standing directly opposite the beautiful Mount Irvin Beach. It means guests have easy access to Mount Irvin Beach and accompanying restaurant. And if you're keen for some outdoor fun, access to water sports as well. In our first story, Finance Month is here, bringing greater awareness to issues such as financial literacy and youth empowerment. But the main event is the Economic Business Outlook Conference, which looks at challenges and the way forward for the economic sector. Here's this story. Advancing our development agenda through innovation, industry and investment. That was the theme for the Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference 2019. This year's conference examined solutions for some of Tobago's most pressing economic challenges and provided an update on the island's development agenda. We chose this team because we firmly believe that innovation, investment and industry are integral to advancing our island's development at this time. Innovation, investment and industry are all critical to economic growth and diversification. And given the well-known challenges with some of our ex existing industries, these components are evidently what Trinidad and Tobago in general, and Tobago more specifically, urgently requires at this time. For this reason, I am particularly excited about this year's conference. The conference covered issues such as medium-term planning, development effectiveness, implementation efficiency, and directing investments for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Today is about advancing economic development. Can we develop dynamic and sustainable new paradigms? New paradigms. And the answer to that is yes. And I think three things are needed. Bold leadership, unbounded imagination, and taking a holistic approach. Youth unemployment was also on the agenda. On average in the region, we have one in four of our young people unemployed. And as you all know, the longer you stay out of the labor market, the more difficult it is for you to ever enter the labor market. And the conference allowed attendees to share their perspectives and get feedback from economic experts. What strategies or actions did Dr. Farrell or Dr. Ram propose to deal with the issue of climate shocks? Because you speak about hurricanes, but Tobago is more susceptible to climate shocks. The, the Ministry of Planning and Development in Trinidad, in terms of the Vision 2030 document that you have seen, there is a recognition inside of there about the question of climate change. There's an understanding of the issue. Whether or not let me just say, I don't think the Ministry of Planning and Development has translated that understanding of the issue into actions and projects that will serve to mitigate and to build resilience uh, against climate shocks. The Economic and Business Outlook Conference was hosted at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Surface Paradise can accommodate up to 28 guests. Here, four fully air-conditioned bedrooms with ensuite bathrooms await. It's an oasis, your home away from home. 
So in an increasingly competitive economic environment, Trinidad and Tobago is making the effort to stand out with the aid of its national trade policy. The policy will serve for the period 2019 to 2023. It was recently launched in Tobago, as you'll see in this next story. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has launched a new trade policy for the years 2019 to 2023. The trade policy will guide this country's transformation from exporting traditional goods to exploiting new sectors which can increase the country's export performance and improve foreign exchange earnings. It is also very important in the government's fight to alleviate and to reduce poverty and unemployment. The national reality, however, is that the country's exports are far too specialized in a few products when compared to the world average or even when compared with other similarly sized economies. And for Tobago, this reality is even more obvious as exports are primarily from the tourism sector in the first instance. Five main goals will be pursued over the next five years, namely, establishing a more facilitative and enabling business and a trading environment in Trinidad and Tobago, increasing exports of non-energy goods and services, increasing production and exports of high-value added goods and services, securing a larger share of CARICOM trade, and seeking to expand Trinidad and Tobago's market share within the country's traditional and non-traditional markets. And to facilitate these goals, the policy has three main objectives. And firstly, improving the trade, the business and investment environment. Secondly, modernizing the national trade policy environment. And finally, increasing market access and penetration for the country's exporters. As it relates to Tobago, Finance Secretary Joel Jack says it is critical for stakeholders to explore and exploit new markets for goods and services produced in this country. We must actively seek to find goods and services for which we have a comparative advantage and place our energies and direct our resources towards their production. The sectors targeted for expansion include agriculture and agro-processing, green industries, industrialized tourism, education, medical and health and wellness services, the creative industries, professional, financial, energy maritime services, and information communication technology, ICT. The policy states that growth in these priority sectors will be achieved by fostering innovation, modernizing economic infrastructure, enhancing trade financing, engaging the private sector, creating export platforms, and eliminating non-tariff barriers. The living room is a huge open space with a relaxed seating arrangement. Play, entertain, or just unwind. It's all up to you. Now, November is also the month when Community Week 2019 was commemorated, and it was a great opportunity for the Business Development Unit to host its check distribution and prize-giving ceremony. More in this report. Well, I think the best thing that ever happened to me it's community development. I must say, the best thing that ever happened to me is community development. And I, I know there are many people who want to join us, and we, with open arms, we welcome you all. Kanika Marie's excitement reflects the kind of work culture the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor is trying to create. During Community Development Week celebrations, which ended recently, one of the goals was to foster togetherness and cooperation. The theme was Engage and Empower, and Community Development Secretary Marcelin Melville-Jack believes that this has been achieved. This has been a fantastic week for the Division of Community Development, Enterprise right. Development and Labor. I saw the family of Comdev coming together in ways that I have not seen before. I was amazed at the energy that was generated by all members of staff. And this is because we are passionate about what we do. And what we do is build strong families, sustainable communities, and a healthy, productive workforce. Community Development Week celebrations featured a street parade through the capital Scarborough as well as a Thanksgiving service and a parenting symposium. 
The Business Development Unit also hosted its prize-giving and check distribution ceremony, while community champions also had their time in the spotlight. You, our awardees, have played an integral role in this process of people development. You have contributed to shaping the social, economic, and cultural conditions of our communities. Your involvement in the sphere of community development cannot be measured, and for this, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Today, Friday, marked the culmination of a fantastic week, and we plan to party late into the night, bringing to an end a fantastic Community Development Week 2019. This was the second year Community Development Week was hosted by the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but coming up next, another milestone for St. Andrew's Anglican Church. Don't go away. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. The kitchen here at Surface Paradise features modern appliances to inspire your culinary creativity. Whether you're brewing that first cup of morning coffee or putting your personal touch on a sumptuous dinner. Now 200 years is a great milestone for any organization. That's why St. Andrew's Anglican Church recently hosted a special celebration marked by a series of activities. They included a cantata, as we'll find out in this next story from Omodara Mills. Celebratory and reflective describe the atmosphere as St. Andrew's Anglican Church continues to commemorate 200 years of existence in Tobago. The church's cantata entitled Sankofa was one of the major events marking St. Andrew's bicentennial anniversary after the church was first dedicated in 1819. Parishioners gave praises through the speech band. We hope all they reflect on the past and build a successful future and make Tobago a better place for your son and your daughter. Sankova means go back and get, but be careful what you're picking up. On the national instrument, in dance, with recitals, and in song. The church was destroyed during Hurricane Flora in 1963, but the foundation remained intact. The building was then reconstructed on the same site. For the last two centuries, the Anglican Church has been instrumental in the spiritual and academic growth of the people of Tobago. It has been a journey, it has been struggle, and it has been victories and successes as well. And, and, and we have contributed, the Anglican Church that is, have contributed to the life um, or, and the development of the island of Tobago. Um, Bishop High School um, is one significant milestone. Um, by the, the late Bishop um, Anstey and also a number of primary schools and, and the, 
the church has been forefront in education and social services. Parishioner and Organizing Committee Chairman Alan Richards is awed by the church's milestone. Well, it's certainly a great achievement given all the things that have, that have happened over time. You feel a bit of elation. The church's bicentennial anniversary also featured a church service in February and a dinner in August. There will be a rededication service on November 30th. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. This lounge apartment is something very special. It's attached to the main house, yet designed to provide maximum privacy. The apartment can be rented separately. Its deco is inspired by the beach, of course, and it beckons you to stay indoors. Now let's look at health. Breast cancer is on the rise in Tobago. So the island is taking proactive measures to tackle the disease through a focus on wellness. One way is to increase breast health awareness through clinics such as the one you'll see in this next story. Here's more. More than 500 cancer patients are being treated at the TRHA's oncology department. At least 200 are breast cancer cases. Prostate cancer also accounts for a significant number of patients at the oncology unit. The increasing number of breast cancer patients prompted the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development to commission a Pink Room Breast Health Clinic in Delaford earlier this year. The move was meant to decentralize women's health services. No longer women will have to leave East Tobago and go to Scarborough, for instance, for their care. And we have been seeing persons looking at and paying closer attention to their, their service. Since the clinic opened in May, hundreds of women have already accessed services, pap smears, breast ultrasounds, and biopsies. They also benefited from a one-day bra fitting session in commemoration of Breast Cancer Month. It allows for you to have, whether you've, you have breast cancer or not, to have your breast examined, to have your fitting done so you know what to wear, um, what size to wear, and so on. And if you've had or if you're a survivor, you can see um, what is the best um, prosthesis you should be wearing. The bra fitting clinic was conducted by founder and CEO of Miss Bra Fit Limited, Nicole Joseph Chin, in collaboration with the health division. Mrs. Joseph Chin explains why it's important to have the right fitting bra, especially after surgery. If it's too heavy or too light, it's going to put pressure on your spine. And that's also part of the dignity conversation. You want a sexy bra. You want the matching panties. You want to feel feminine. You want to feel empowered. Based on the feedback from clients, the division will consider adding bra fitting sessions to the list of pink room services. The division is also addressing men's health through the establishment of a blue room. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The spa and the pool are set front and center on a huge deck with the most fantastic beach view ever. It's just one more excuse to find a book and kick back in a hammock or drink in one of the most spectacular sunsets you will see in the Caribbean. Now this, Xavier Edwards is a musical genius, bringing positive messages through his music, which he describes as hip-hop soul. He's a National Youth Awardee for 2019, and you'll hear his story in this next report. He's a musical genius, playing instruments, penning songs, composing music, and performing. It's led to 27-year-old Xavier Edwards earning a National Youth Award for positive message through music by the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs. I am a lover of music, so I grew up listening to him play jazz, piano, listen to my father play jazz, my uncle had a bunch of CDs and vinyls. And I was just a kind of passive consumer of music for most of my life until I was about 14 years old and there was this competition to write a song in high school. And the song was in PE class about bones or the muscular system or something. And I wrote my song and it was great. Xavier says he's pleased to have won the award. He says his music was not always positive, 
That was before he became a conscious consumer. He explains. I was unattached to winning. Um, all the competitors were, the other um, candidates were good artists, great artists. Voice was one and Aaron Duncan was one. So I was unattached to winning while also open to the idea. And I didn't know I wanted till they called my name. And I was just like, oh, isn't that great? It's primarily for your soul. It's primarily to communicate to the immaterial part of your existence. Um, since then, the music has transformed to kind of not be genre specific, but feeling and vibrational specific. Um, so it's more, it's all high vibrational conscious content encouraging self-discovery and transformation. This versatile artist already has big plans for the future. More music, more expansion, more growth as a person, because it's bigger than the music. It's, it's who I am as a person. More peace, more joy, more awards <laughs> by grace. And just, you know, just more growth in the music industry, not just to be bigger, but to be more wholesome. Xavier has performed at Tobago Jazz Experience 2017 and 2019, Decibel Entertainment Festival in Trinidad, and Colibri Festival in the USA. Xavier also won the THA Youth Award for Performing Arts just last month. We have to take a break, but when we return, several spoken word artists support a worthy cause. It's up next on Let's Talk Tobago. Stay with us. There we go, there we go, to Tobago, that paradise, Bombay, Robinson Crusoe, and it is said, it's the land of tomorrow, Princess Margaret say, come to Tobago for holiday, now the whole world say, come to Tobago for holiday. Surface Paradise is also a wonderful location to say I do if you are planning a destination wedding or simply welcome to family and friends at that family reunion. It can host up to 120 guests with support from their well-trained staff. From Mount Irvin, we take the short trip to Lowlands and the Fairways Restaurant and Lounge. It was the venue for Mood Swings 5, which doubled as a fundraiser for Omavi Langevin to support his battle against leukemia. It brought out some of the country's top spoken word artists, and we have the highlights in this story. Yes, I will rise regardless. I know that I will rise. I feel a deep inside. Yes. That I would rise regardless Need to tell yourself that I would rise up This is 31-year-old yes, Umavi Langevin, the canvas poet. He's got a very interesting story that's led to a very special event hosted recently in Tobago. I was diagnosed this year with AML, which stands for acute myeloid leukemia, um, so which means it's very aggressive. And I would have spent um, some time in Cuba for treatment, about th three months. And that is when they discovered something else with the leukemia. So now it is um, acute myelofibrosis secondary to leukemia. That's just a whole, t it's just two different types of blood cancers together. This would be, I guess, my first official performance since coming out of the hospital and stuff like that. Um, and honestly, I, I see no better place to the Tobago-based Mood Writers Poetry Club was established in 2009, and for the past five years, the group has been hosting Spoken Words events. And because of his ordeal and fighting spirit, its members felt that this show should be dedicated to the talented Spoken Word performer and that all proceeds should go to him. This show was necessary because we really need to be our brother's keeper. So you see our brother need help? If everybody come together, we always got to help. The cast was full as many of Omavi's friends, skilled spoken on artists in their own right, came out to lend their support. They included Cleon McPherson, Zakia Gill, Ascala George, Kyle Amos, and Crystal Skeet. Each and every performer gave their best, and it was intimate, it was personal, it was touching, and you could see they gave from their hearts. 
So Marv, if you're hearing us, we wish you all the best from Tobago. We love you and we'll continue with you on your journey towards your recovery from leukemia. The experience of the Mood Writers event this evening was really inspiring, um, touching and the fact that we were raising funds towards Omari, Omabi, you know, made me feel fulfilled in a sense. So I wish him all the best. It, it was easy to be better. Each bead of sweat that surfaces on the back of your neck and flows down your spine becomes a river. My fingers swim across every time my kisses blows life into your arousal. Come, let us make love in our own image. This dust that has formed us will be swept under this blanket tonight. Woman, you are uncharted waters. First and foremost, I must say um, thank you for everyone. I mean, today is like a thankful Tuesday for me. So many places you all could have been tonight, you know. I really, really appreciate the love. I really appreciate the love. I really appreciate the support. And um, I am taking it day by day. The event was held at the Fairways Restaurant and Golf Lounge in Lowlands. Yeah, a tablespoon of peace. And Crystal George for Let's Stop Tobago. Please remember pour your libations. It's now time to have your say. It's the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. Let's take a look at who had their say this week with Marlon Gutsleben. Um, you know That's not hold on. I've written for you money for the question. And it's that time again. It's have your say time again. Now walking through town asking men if they know that yesterday or the day before was International Men's Day. Most of them telling me no. This leads us to our question. Do you think men need to be celebrated more? This is what you said. Men need support at this team. They need psychological support, physical, mental support. Men need support. More emphasis need to place on men. Everything that's been for women, they keep they keep in Mother's Day, everything for women. And I find men doesn't get, get treated as they, the, the way they should. Oh, women deserve it. Men has lost their way. Men has to really, really step up to the plate. All them events has be coming up like Valentine's and, and Diwali and all these things. You have to be hearing about it. But International Men's Day, you ain't hear nothing about it. Nobody knows that yesterday. It's nice to know that day where we have a day. For we self too. Yeah, of course. If the women have a day, a special day, at least celebrating for them. And the men supposed to have a special day too. At least really important. We need it, men. We need it good because they are, you know, fathers to our children, husbands to wives. Men have a lot of benefit in a home. Without a man at home, it's not a home. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Men on a whole kind of guide and create the system and the society we live in. So it would be good to celebrate men a little more. Sure it should be because they need our support and we have to be there for them. I mean emphasis should be placed on, on men because men play a, a great role in the home, in the family, in the church. If you treat your men good, oh you'll get a good man. Hats off to all men who have played their role as great fathers, great leaders. And um, it's a good thing that men are being recognized too for those men who have played the role. And you know, we could step up and continue rolling. It was A. That's not hold on. I've written for you money for the question. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information on Silver's Paradise Filler, you can call or WhatsApp 319-9394 or send your emails to silversparadisevilla at gmail.com. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and enjoyable week. We leave you with a montage of Remembrance Day 2019.